Welcome! This tutorial on working with digital images in IIIF is part of the Querying Art History Data on the Web video tutorial series. It is produced in cooperation with the University of Jena and the project Digital for Humanities – Digital Research Method in Art History. This video tutorial series, Querying Art History Data on the Web, contains various methods of querying, modeling and analyzing art history data. Today we are looking at working with digital images and IIIF. We will first look into what IIIF means and what it can be used for, then into the different APIs and data standing at the back. We will explore some IIIF viewers and how you can do annotations on digital images and share them with others. We will also look at possibilities on how to create your own IIIF collections. Finally, some projects will be presented for different use scenarios. What is IIIF? IIIF stands for International Image Interoperability Framework. This framework consists of an exchange format as an international compatible image standard. In the past, images were exclusively hosted on the database and catalog of the institution to which they belonged, let's say a museum or a library. With this new standard, these images are still hosted by their provider, but they can be easily taken into other collections or image viewers. This means you can compare them with other images. But you can also do a lot more, like annotating, manipulating and sharing them. This standard is now used by a lot of museums, libraries and projects. Why would you want to use IIIF? Apart from the better viewing options, like zooming into an image, rotating, focusing on specific areas, manipulating images in many ways, comparing images, annotating and sharing images with others, there are many more reasons, of which I will only present a few. The major benefit of IIIF is basically the way you can work with images, also in collaborative ways and in projects. Here are simply mentioned a few of these possibilities. The backbone of all these possibilities are the APIs running in the back. Currently there are six. On their implementation depends what you can do with an image. We will come back to some of these APIs later. For now, just bear in mind that the Image API is an obligatory feature together with a IIIF manifest and that most versions come also with a presentation API, while for the annotations, the Content Search API is useful. Very few IIIF viewers and projects come with a whole set. When I said that the Image API is essential, I did so because this is what you'll need when you retrieve an image. It provides also the possibility to work with an image, size it, rotate it and so on. And you find this in the URI so that, for example, the snippet view always remains the same. Here we are looking at template and for an example for this URI and its parts. There are fixed parts in this URI that refer to the angle of inclination or define if your image is in color or in black and white. The presentation API contains some information about the original depository of the image, its title and more metadata if necessary. Here you are looking at an example from the IIIF documentation showing the interaction of the various data. The presentation API is, as you see, a useful feature to have. To look at it from the back end, we see a JSON file, where this information is stored. It contains a title or label, the format, the ID and so forth. Here we have an example from the Harvard Hollis catalog, a painting by Botticelli in the IIIF version. When you click on the information icon, you will see some things written out, like the provider, the title or label, the license and a link to the IIIF manifest. The manifest is unique to this item and it is the URI which you need to be able to view this image also in other environments. To do this, you simply need to copy and paste this string into another viewer. But only IIIF viewers are able to read this string in this way. 
If you copy and paste this string into a browser, you will see the JSON file that stands behind it, as you can see above. It contains the ID, the original provider, the format and else. Let us now look at some IIIF viewers. The first two viewers, the Universal Viewer and Mandukus, are general viewers, which means that they are not connected to any collection. You can take a manifest string into these viewers and watch images from other collections in here. The second two are the most used IIIF viewers implementation in library and museum databases. They are Mirador and OpenSeaDragon. Built into a library or museum catalog, they provide the necessary backbone for working with IIIF APIs. There are a number of library and museum catalogs that offer IIIF images. Here I am listing only a few. Looking at them closer will show that they do not work the same way. They all offer different possibilities to work with images. This depends on the number and choices of APIs each viewer has installed. Here we are looking at an example from the IIIF viewer of the Biblioteca Apostolica Vaticana, the Vatican Library. This catalogue contains a lot of medieval and Renaissance manuscripts. The catalogue gives the opportunity to open more windows and compare the manuscripts. The information icon contains the repository and the manifest of the whole manuscript. The row below is showing the canvases of the manuscript. Scrolling on, you can see each page with a respective pagination. Canvases make it a lot easier to deal with images when there are more than one, which is the case when dealing with manuscripts. Here is the IIIF viewer of the Bodleian Library in Oxford. You can, of course, look at the library's own collection, but you can also add IIIF images from other libraries and work with them. You start by clicking on Open Manifest and paste an URL from any IIIF image here. The URL is the IIIF manifest string which you need to paste here. Here I have added a manifest from the Vatican Library. I can stroll through the manuscript pages on top or the preview through the canvas entries below. Note that canvases appear here only if the manifest and data included those. Not every IIIF image has additional canvases. If you like and find it useful for working, the Bodleian Library Viewer allows you to split the image and see two or more images or pages in comparison. There are some nice features which make this viewer currently a better working tool than other viewers. One feature is the way you can work with canvases. You can add a canvas, duplicate canvas, move canvases to left or right, or eliminate them to leave only those that you need. The other important feature is that you can add metadata on the manuscript level and on the canvas level. For example, your preferred title or annotation or else. Thereafter, you can save and download the data. Later, we will turn to other important functionalities of this viewer. Here is a task for you. Go and check the differences between the IIIF viewers. Take images via the manifest from one viewer to the other and see what you can do with them. There are many ways how to work with IIIF images. One very useful tool is the annotation module. Remember that this does not work with every IIIF viewer, but only with those that have an appropriate API installed. Annotations can be very useful, either to make notes and images for your own project, or to share annotations with others, or to use them for teaching. There are several ways to do annotations. I just mentioned the possibility to add notes to the manifest and the Bodleian viewer to save and export them. Another way would be to use the simple annotation server. Let me explain this in some simple steps. Here are the possibilities with the Bodleian viewer. You can add data and notes either by manifest data or on the canvas metadata. In case of a manuscript, this would regard either the entire manuscript or just one page. 
under the rubric Custom Field, you can click on Add Metadata Field and choose any category or topic you need, together with the specification or some notes. This is up to you. Then you need to save the manuscript and thereafter you share it with others. To share IIIF annotations with others, you need an external server that is compatible with annotations. Those are necessary because otherwise the annotations would be only living on your computer. There are several ways to share annotations, for example via the Cantaloop IIIF server or via the Simple Annotation server. Let us first look at the Simple Annotation Viewer while we come back to Cantaloop later on. Using the Simple Annotation server is very easy because you don't need to download anything. You just need to sign up to one of the three options. Once logged in, you can create your own collection or IIIF single or multi page images. My collection here is named Renaissance Manuscripts. Thereafter, you go to Add IIIF Manifest and drop the string of the IIIF Manifest URL here. You see that I uploaded a couple of manuscripts from the Vatican Library. Next, you can click on the Annotate in Mirador icon to open the manuscript pages. After you open the single or serial images in the viewer, you see that the annotation option on the top left corner. There are several available. I have chosen the rectangle to mark an area in the drawing. Next, I can add a comment or description and place tags. The note field may also link to external sources or images if you like to compare. The text instead will become searchable in the viewing and shareable interface. Note that for inserting text, you need to click the Enter or Return button to make this tag appear. Here you see what this could look like. One tip. If you use annotations for teaching, you could place a task in the note text and tag this as a task to make it searchable. Of course, the same works for projects and collaborations. When you want to see and search for annotations, you click back on top on the Home button. There you can either browse directly in your annotations or share them with others. If you like to share your annotations, you can do this within the manifest and copy this. Sharing the annotation manifest will give you the full code of the IIIF image or set of images, including the data for the annotations. We mentioned that there are different ways to share annotations with others. One way is via the Simple Annotation Server, and you will find more explanation on how to use this on the IIIF help pages. Here, images and annotations can either go together or separate. Another way is to share annotations on the workbench on GitHub. In most cases, annotations are dealt with separately. That means that you load an image into a hosted server, do annotations, download annotations, link them to the manifest, publish the manifest, and annotations to the instance on Mirador. In this tutorial, we cannot deal with all the possible versions. Go to these instruction pages and find more information on the Simple Annotation Server and the Workbench options from there, as well as other solutions for annotations. Here comes another possibility for collections and annotations. The platform Art Historicum offers plenty of IIIF images. Their search tool Smart Picture allows to build collections with any IIIF images, to create a memory list of manifests, to annotate and to share collections with others. Now here comes a task for you. Try the simple annotation server on your own. Load the IIIF manifest and annotate and tag it. If you like, you can explore the share options. In this part of the presentation, I'm going to show some tutorial about the two main IIIF APIs. These two are the Image API and the Presentation API. Starting with the Image API, 
Its main goal is to facilitate the systematic reuse of image resources contained in Digital Images Repository. From the user's perspective, the API can do it, exploiting the strengths of Acable standard URL. For this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up an image server on your computer using Cantaloupe. Cantaloupe is an open source, high performance, dynamic image server written in Java. Note that since it is written in Java, it requires Java 11 installed on your computer. Now let's download Cantaloupe. As soon as it is downloaded, we are going to unzip it and move the download folder in another place. In my case, on the desktop. Opening the folder, we can see many files. Now we create a new folder. I'm going to call it images. That is the one folder containing all the images we are going to provide. For the configuration process, first we copy the full path of the images folder that we have just created. Then we are interested in dealing with a configuration file called cantaloupe.properties.sample. We duplicate this file, rename it, and open it in a text editor. We scroll down to find the path prefix property and change it to match the path of the folder created in the previous step. Remember the training slash. Once the configuration is complete, we need to open a command prompt and then move to the cantaloupe folder. From here, we need to execute this command that we can find on the website. Remember to change the command matching the path to counter properties that we have on our computer. Execute the command and we can see some output logs. Open a browser and check if the cantaloupe server is running. Now the server is running. Also, we have created a folder that we contain the images. We just need to add a few images and play with the hackable URL. We need to move a few images in the folder and access them thanks to the browser. Candeloop, by default, runs on the port 8182. This means that we can access the images from localhost on that port. Asking from the image that we just moved on the folder, we could just get in return its metadata. Now, let's try playing with its representation. If you want to get the original image, we specify region as full, size as full, rotation 0, quality default, and extension as PNG. And this is the result. Let's try changing the representation now. Setting the region as a square, we want to get the biggest square containing the, into the image. Comma 800 specify the 8 of the square in pixels. Rotation 45 is the degree of rotation. Quality gray means that the result is in black and white. We can change this parameter to customize in every way we want the image representation. After a IIIF tutorial on image API, let's move to the presentation API. The presentation API is what you're seeing right now. The presentation API has information about the title label, the structure, a table of content, and the sequence of canvases that you are seeing on the bottom. At the center of the presentation, you see the image API, which is the image data that we have created before. 
For doing that, the presentation API uses a full JSON object called the manifest. The manifest contains one or more sequences, which are the order of all the pages contained in the manifest. A sequence has one or more canvases. Each canvas is a single page, and the canvas can have, or may not have, a digital content, for instance, an image. For this tutorial, we need to create a new manifest, and for this purpose, we can use the Bodleian Editor. From the website, you can click the New Manifest button. In this user interface, you can see some of the terms discussed before. On the right, the metadata that we are editing right now are the manifest metadata. We can change the label, the description, attribution, and so on. On the bottom, we can click the plus one button to add new canvases. We just created a new one. Selecting the empty canvas and moving to the canvas metadata tab on the right, we can add a new image. In this model dialog, we can add the image URI. It requires a IIIF image URI, so we've used the previous image for this purpose. We paste it, submit the URI, and at this point, we see the image. From here, we can change the label of the canvas as well. Now, save the manifest, download, move it to the desktop, open it to see its content. We see the label, the description, the sequences, and all the metadata of the canvases. At this point, we need a web server to provide the manifest. A web server is different from Canaloop, which was intended for providing images. Now, our goal is to provide objects, such as the manifest we just created in JSON format. For doing that, we can use Servets. It has available distribution for Mac, Linux, and Windows. And clicking on the download link, we are redirected to the list of available distributions. Now, select the right one according to your operating system. I'm skipping the download part, but when it is completed, we can create a new folder, the then calling server, and move the manifest in it. Now, run servers and select the folder that you want to serve, for instance, the one we just created. And be sure to check the CORS either box. And now start the server. Let's navigate to localhost 8080 slash manifest.json to see if the manifest is returned. Yes, now the server is working correctly. To see if the manifest is correct, navigate to projectmirador.org. Mirador is an image viewer able to understand and visualize IIIF manifest. Let's try with the one we just created. Click on Try a Live Demo button, then close all the previous visualizations. Now click on the blue button on the top left and add resource in the bottom right. Let's copy and paste the URL of our IIIF manifest, the one from localhost, paste it, and hit the add button. Mirador is actually able to interpret our manifest. We have the manifest label on the top left, the canvas label on the bottom, and most importantly, we are visualizing the image on the canvas. The same passages can be done with bigger manifest containing hundreds of images. Behind IIIF stands a large community of users, researchers and developers. A lot of institutions and projects are using the standard. 
In this section, I will show some libraries and museums using IIIF, online exhibition tools for IIIF images, as well as projects and research incorporating IIIF images. At the beginning of this tutorial, we have already seen some libraries using the IIIF image standard for their collections. Well known are, for example, the Vatican Library, as well as the Bodleian Library in Oxford. Nowadays, there are plenty of universities and regional libraries that have made available the collection through this standard. The spirit of sharing and making collections available for research is what guides the IIIF community. The same goes obviously for the museum sector, including, for example, the Victoria and Albert Museum and the National Gallery in London, the Art Institute in Chicago, the Getty Institute in Los Angeles, and many more. The spirit of sharing and availability does not exclude small museums. Museum Digital is a small project, including over 900 smaller museums, many in Germany, but not only. They offer a shared catalogue and access, which otherwise would have been difficult to deal with for the single institution. IIIF-enabled images are also great to use in online exhibition tools. The IIIF info page contains a few of them. A few exhibition tools are, for example, the Platform Exhibit, or Spotlight, or Stroll View, or Omeka S. Let us look briefly at the first three. Exhibit is a very easy to use tool for exhibitions. You can simply upload a manifest and the image gets pulled into the tool. Then you give some descriptions. It also has nice features to zoom into a picture or 3D views to look at objects from different angles. Strollview was created through a collaboration between the University of Göttingen and Sage Digital. Strollview consists of three applications, an editor for creating stories, the so-called strolls, a player for presenting the strolls, and a separate service that helps storing the strolls on GitHub. These are tutorials that are available on this page that help you with the setup. Spotlight has been developed at Stanford University. It is another digital exhibition space that allows to incorporate 3D images as well. Be aware that the tool is a sign up for an account. Plenty of projects are built around the IIIF standard. Researchers working with manuscripts were among the first to take advantage of the database independent image view tools. The Handschriftenportal Deutschland, the German manuscript portal, collects numerous manuscripts held in German institutions. It provides a catalogization with descriptions, IIIF images, and a link to the catalog of the hosting institution. This way, the manuscripts in Germany can be accessed through one entry site. The Codex Sinaiticus project is another manuscript project that takes advantages of the database independent access. Here we are dealing with one manuscript dismantled and split over several collections. The Codex Sinaiticus is a manuscript containing the Christian Bible in Greek, with the oldest complete copy of the Old Testament. Fragments are held by the British Library the National Library of Russia, the St. Catherine's Monastery and the Leipzig University Library and they have all put their pages together to give a broad view and an almost complex view of the Codex Sinaiticus. These are just some examples out of a big community of users. Check the IIIF info pages to find more. The IIIF community is large and there are plenty of resources available to get you started. These pages will take you to some more tutorials. Here we have explained some of the first steps of dealing with IIIF images, but there is a lot more you can do with them. We welcome you back to our next video on artistry data on the web. In video number 7 you will learn about art historical data and research questions.